Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on downloading GIS data, spatial data, from Adena Digimap for use in QGIS. This very brief video tutorial has been designed for those students currently undertaking the Diploma in Archaeological Studies at the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology at the University of Bristol and is a precursor to another video tutorial looking specifically at the use of QGIS for archaeologists. Okay, first thing I want you to do is to open up a internet browser. Um, some of these may be Internet Explorer, I'm using Mozilla Firefox and I want you to go to your web address bar here at the top where mine says go to a website and in this bar I would like you to type in www.edina.ac.uk forward slash digimap then hit return and you'll be brought into this screen and automatically it will ask you to log in to your account as a student at the University of Bristol you'll have access to a range of spatial data. Click on login and you'll be brought to another screen. If this is the first time you've used it you'll have to enter the name of your organization in this box here but as I've used Digimap before it's telling me that the last time I used it it was for the University of Bristol so I'm going to stick with that. Click on that and then it's going to take you through to another screen. In this case it's something most of you will be familiar with. Uh, I'm going to input my username and also my password and I'm going to log in. You'll now return to this screen here and if you've used this before this should all be quite familiar to you. Okay, what we're going to do is just download some very basic data. This is going to be the 1 to 50,000 maps, the 1 to 25,000 maps, the 1 to 10,000 maps and raster versions of the master map. To do this we're going to select on one of these options here and you can see there are a range of different things you can pick on. You can do geology, you can do historic maps. But we're first of all going to go to ordnance survey. When we hold our mouse button over the top of this we get another option on the right which some of you may have used before including things like Rome and Carto. But what we're going to do is click on download OS map data OS mapping data for use in GIS and CAD. And if you click on this little arrow, it brings up three options. Now, we're going to ignore for the moment boundary download and master map download. Uh, master map is vector data, and I'll come to explain vector data in more detail during the QGIS video tutorial. For now, we're going to get the normal standard mapping that most people will be familiar with, and we're going to do that by clicking on data download. You're going to be presented with this copyright notice and this is because none of the information or the data you download from the data can be used for commercial purposes it is purely for educational reasons so you say agree to that and then it will take you through to another screen and this screen you will see here will be the outline of Britain uh, and Ireland and on the left you've got a series of options which won't possibly mean an awful lot to you at the moment first thing we're going to do is download the data that we're interested in. So we want to search for the place. Now as part of the video tutorial coming up on QGIS I've chosen to do Winterbourne Medieval Barn but those of you who are doing the Diploma in Archaeology and Anthropology may decide to download the data for Clifton Downs for the Romano-British field system that you undertook your earthwork survey of. So what I'm going to do here is after I've pushed search at the top I'm, you can enter a postcode or a grid reference. I'm just going to put in Winterbourne and I'm going to hit return. And I've got a load of in Winterbournes all over the country. The one that I'm interested in is the very top one for me, South Gloucestershire. Close. And what you'll now see is that the map has changed to a much more detailed view showing the 1 to 50,000 raster. And you can see this cursor with cross four arrows. If I just hold the left mouse button down it allows me to drag and move the screen around. The area of interest for me is this part here right next to this symbol for the church where we have a medieval barn and what I'm going to do is I want to download a small collection of spatial data. To do this once you've identified the area that you're looking at you've got an opportunity to, to, to zoom in and out so if I was to push the minus button a couple of times you would 
come out and it's still showing the 1 to 50,000 master it's just a bit further out but I'm still interested in this area here when you've decided on the area you're interested in go up to this option here which says draw rectangle click it once and then you draw a rectangle around what you want now I'm going to go for quite a small area but you could cover a massive area if you wanted lots of base map data covering a large area you could do a very large rectangle and you'll see here that it goes orange I don't want to do that because it means downloading more data than I actually need for this tutorial but it's all about you guys deciding what you think is best for your particular project so my interest is this area here so I'm going to do another triangle a rectangle and you'll see here that we've now got a smaller squarish feature other than that, nothing else seems to have changed much on the screen. So what we're going to do is move across to these options here on the left. And these are the different types of data that you can download and make use of in your GIS program. We're going to click on backdrop mapping. And what we're going to find is that we can make choices on various different types of standard ordnance survey base map data. We have, for example, the 1 to 50,000 raster data, the 1 to 25,000, the 1 to 10,000. For those of you who are familiar with OS Street View, you can have a look at, you can download these. If you're unsure what these are, if you click on the I button, you'll see that they'll bring up a little screen giving you the scale, the date, type of data that it is, as well as a small thumbnail showing you what you're going to expect when you download. My interest is in downloading the 1 to 50,000, 1 to 25,000, 1 to 10,000 and the 1 to 1,000 master map data. And to do that, I just click on each of the ones here, highlight them and it now says I've selected four things and what I'd like to do then, or what I will do shortly, is add the basket. But just to show you how this works, if you were to draw a bigger rectangle, if I now go back to the screen and draw a larger rectangle, what you'll see here is I've got one tile for 1 to 50,000, one tile for 1 to 25,000, one tile for the 1 to 10,000, but 20 tiles for the master map data, which is far too much for what I actually need. So I'm just going to return this to the size that we had before, roughly the size we had before, and now we've got a good selection. So I'm now going to click Add to Basket. If you want, before you do that, you can actually choose some other types of data. For those of you who are interested in height data, you've got Contours and Digital Terrain Model, or DTM. Um, they're at different scales, so you have a 1 to 50,000, a 1 to 10,000, as well as various other types of location data. But I'm just going to stick with this for now, say so add to basket. This screen then comes up which is showing you the things that you're interested in downloading. It's like a shopping basket on any online purchaser. You have to give this download a name. So I'm just going to click in this red box and I'm going to call it Winterborn Barn Tutorial. You'll see that the, the email address it's going to send it to is my university email address. Press download. You've got an option, sometimes, depending on the data that you have, you'll have an option to change the format. But for the moment, you're just going to stick with TIFF. So we're going to click Request Download. It's submitting its order. And we say OK. And what that will do is eventually send you an email into your designated email account, from which will provide a link back in to a DNA Digimap for you to pick up your data. So what I'm going to do is open up my email, and I'm going to take a look at this. Now, this will take some while to download, uh, it may do, maybe it's instant, sometimes it takes quite a while before the email is sent through to you or the data is prepared, so I suggest you pause this tutorial and resume once you've managed to receive the email from Dina. Okay, so I've logged into my email account, um, I've done this via webmail, but you have various ways in which you want to do this, and I've seen that an email has been received which tells me that my data is actually available for download and it says I can collect, if I'm logged in already, which I am, I can click on this link here and it will take me through to the correct place. 
slight error there, but uh, managed to resolve it. Um, I d opened my webmail in Internet Explorer, even though I'd logged in to Adina in uh, Mozilla. Uh, therefore, what I've done is just copied the URL from my. I just copied this from this email, pasted it into my URL area at the top of Firefox, and clicked OK turn and it brings me into this screen and this is the screen most of you will if you followed these instructions should now get and it's giving us now the opportunity to download the data you can see here that it's telling us the date telling us it's ready giving us the order name and it's also telling us the size of 24.2 megabytes so there's quite a bit of stuff to actually download this is going to be compressed when you actually download the data and put it onto your computer it's going to be slightly larger so we're going to click download and Depending on what um, software you have, you want to unzip this file and save it on to your computer. It's entirely up to you where you want to save it. I've created my own folder called Winterborn Barn, but of course you may not be downloading the same data as I am. Once you've done that, come back and we'll see where the data is stored and what it looks like. Okay, so hopefully by now you have managed to click on the download button it's brought up an opportunity for you to download uh, the, the file and that may have launched uh, another file for you now I make use of something called WinRAR for all my compressed files but the university provides things such as CamZip which are free for you as students to download make use of and um, you can then extract that data from the zip file to a place on your computer. In this case, what I've done is I've set up a file called Winterborne Barn, which I stored on my desktop, and when I open it, I get a range of different files. These four here are the ones that I've just downloaded, and you'll probably see something similar in terms of file names for your own data set. If I go into the 1 to 50,000, you'll see that there are three things here, there's the OS conditions, there's the TSW file, and there's also this file at the bottom, ST68, and if you look along the line, you'll see that it says TIFF. And TIFF is similar to a JPEG or a bitmap, it's just an image file. So before we do anything about loading into QGIS, which will be a separate tutorial, we can just have a look at this data by double clicking. Depending on how you set your machine up, uh, it may open an alternative program such as PaintShop Pro or Photoshop. Uh, in my case, it opens the Windows, the default Windows uh, viewer. And here you can just zoom in and out, and you can see that we have a downloaded, very good, high quality Ordnance Survey base map. And we can have a look through at the other data as well. Same for a 1 to 25,000, same for 1 to 10,000, and we've also got a few tiles that download for the master map. And there we go, that's the master map data. So we now have downloaded the information that we want for use in QGIS. So we now conclude this tutorial, and when you're feeling ready, we'll start our journey to Quantum GIS.